All right, we are finally getting to the end of this packet. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, examples 16 and 17. Okay, we're still going to be working with the future value of an annuity formula for these two problems. Okay, um, example 16 if each day your fairy godmother put one dollar into a savings account at 8.37% compounded daily, how much would the account be worth? when you were 65 years old, assume a 365 day year, okay? All right, after you do this problem, you're gonna want a fairy godmother. Okay, so let's see here. If we, we did this one in example five, you can flip back, I'm not going to. This was example 5A, okay? We labeled this one as a future value of an annuity problem, okay? Reason being, because you've got your fairy godmother, okay, and all she's doing is she opens a savings account for you, and she is putting in one dollar every day, okay? So there are these regular deposits of a dollar a day, okay? So because you're saving money, your regular deposits, that makes this the future value of an annuity formula, okay? So we need to figure out what we're looking for and what we know, okay? So again, all your fairy godmother is doing is putting in a dollar a day into the savings account that earns 8.37% interest compounded daily, okay? So you're, the money's growing through these dollar deposits daily and through the interest, okay? The question is asking, how much is the account worth when you turn 65, okay? So how much does the fairy godmother end up saving for you, okay? And you're gonna be amazed by just saving a dollar a day, how much this accumulates, okay? All right, so let's figure out what we know, okay? We know the obvious, the interest rate is 8.37%, which is 0 0.0837, okay? Um, the Deposits are daily, which coincides with how often the interest is compounded, compounded daily. And we are told to assume a 365 day year. So M is going to be 365. Okay. Um, time. How long does this saving process go on for? Well, 65 years. Okay. So time is going to be 65 years. Okay. And then we're down to P and A. Okay. So P in this situation, remember, that's the amount of each regular deposit. Okay, so P is just going to be a buck. Okay, and then A is the account balance. That's what we're trying to find out. Okay, at when you turn 65 years old, how much is in your account? What's your account balance? Okay, so that's what we're looking for. Okay, so all you need to do is plop all of this into your formula and then into your calculator, and you'll figure out how much your fairy godmother has saved for you. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug everything in. We're looking for A. P is just a dollar, so it's going to be one dollar times the stuff in brackets. So one plus 0 0.0837 divided by 365, okay, close parentheses, raised to the M times T, okay, then subtract one, don't forget to do that, divide everything by R over M, okay? So that's how you set it up, okay? And then you just need to go put this into the calculator, okay? So let's go do that. Okay, so remember, we're gonna start inside the brackets, okay? Out of the numerator and the denominator, okay? The numerator is more complicated, so that's what we're going to enter in first. We're gonna enter in this numerator, okay? And then once we have that, we will divide by the denominator, okay? And then you can, that will give you the quantity in brackets, okay? And then you can multiply by one, okay? Which is kind of optional here because if you multiply by one, you're just gonna get the same thing back, okay? All right, so let's go do this. Um, in the calculator, start in the numerator. So open parentheses, we're gonna have one plus 0 0.0837 divided by 365, close parentheses, raised to the power, okay? You cannot do this exponent in your head. Okay, so if you need to use parentheses, do that. So the exponent's going to be 365 times 65. Okay, close parentheses, get out of the exponent to subtract the one. 
Okay, so that's the numerator. Hit enter. Okay, do not round this at all. Okay, we want to take this entire decimal here and divide by R over M. So just hit your division key. Okay, we need to divide by the entire denominator and to correctly do so, you have to put R over M in parentheses. So open your parentheses and we're going to put R over M, close parentheses. Okay, this will give us the quantity in brackets. Okay. And then after that, you know, you're supposed to multiply this by one, which is not necessary here. Okay, you would get the same thing back. Okay, but this is going to be your account balance when you turn 65. Okay, so let's go jot that down. This is going to be dollars and cents, so you do need to round to the nearest cent. Okay, so thanks to your fairy godmother, whoops, thanks to your fairy godmother, it, on your 65th birthday, okay, you are going to have this amount that's a big number so thank you fairy godmother uh so let's go ahead and round okay so we've got two cents here we've got a five that comes after so we need to round up so by doing this savings account your fairy godmother has saved you one million four hundred and thirty dollars and three cents i told you you'd want a fairy godmother after this problem okay all right, so one more problem, okay? Example 17, okay? Um, all right, this one, let's see. This looks like we did this one also in example five. This is example 5E, okay, which we also labeled as a future value of an annuity problem, okay? Tim and Jessica have set up a Texas 529 plan in order to have $120,000 in 15 years for their children's college education. How much should be paid semi-annually into an account paying 6.8% compounded semi-annually to reach their goal? Okay, so what's going on here is that Tim and Jesse um, have set up a Texas 529 plan. That's something that actually exists that, so that you can save for your, your child's college. Um, and their goal is to save up $120,000 in 15 years. Okay. So if you read this, uh, the question is asking how much should they basically invest into the account semi-annually? So how much should they be paying in so that in 15 years time, they have accumulated $120,000 through the regular deposits and the interest. Um, they've accumulated that amount of $120,000 for their, their kids' college, okay? Um, so, you know, it's implied here that since they're paying semi-annually, they're making these semi-annual semi deposits, okay? Those are regular deposits into the savings account. So they're saving money, regular deposits, okay? So that makes this future value of an annuity, okay? So we're going to be working with this formula. Okay, um, let's figure out what we know and what we're looking for. Okay, obvious things, interest rate is 6.8%, so that's going to be 0 0.068. Compounded semi-annually, that coincides with semi-annual deposits. Okay, those two things should always match. Um, semi-annual means twice a year or every six months. Okay, so M is going to be two because it's two times a year. Okay. Um, time, remember they want to save for 15 years. Okay, so that's your time value. And then we just need to decide which one's A, which one's P, or one of those we're looking for, one of those we know. Okay, um, remember P is the amount of each regular deposit. Okay, that's what we're trying to figure out, how much they need to deposit every six months in order to meet their savings goal. Okay, so we're looking for the P value here. They want to have an account balance of $120,000 in 15 years. So A is $120,000, okay? All right, so that's how you uh, identify everything. Let's put everything into the formula. So we've got A equals, we don't know P, and then we can plug everything else in. So 1 plus 0 0.068 divided by 2 raised to the 2 times 15, subtract 1, and then divide by R over M. Okay, so this is how you set it up. Okay, 
and we need to solve for P. Okay. All right. So again, when you, you know, we've encountered a situation like this before. I'm just trying to give you some extra practice. P is multiplied by all this stuff in brackets. Okay. Everything in brackets is just a number. Okay. So we're going to be able to go to our calculator and plug it in and see what P is being multiplied by. So let's go and do that. Okay, so let's see here. Let's clear out what we had from last time. All right, so again, you want to start in the numerator. That's the most complicated part of the stuff in brackets. Okay, so we're gonna do the numerator first. So we're gonna open parentheses, one plus 0 0.068 divided by two, okay? Close parentheses, raised to the power. The exponent is 2 times 15, so that's 30. You can do that in your head if you want. If not, make sure you enter in the exponent correctly. Okay. If you need parentheses, use it. Okay. Get out of the exponent to subtract 1. Okay. So that's the value of the numerator. You want to carry all the digits. Okay. And now you need to divide by the entire denominator. So hit your division key. Absolutely have to put the de denominator in parentheses. So put parentheses 0 0.068 divided by 2, close parentheses. This is the quantity in brackets. This is what P is being multiplied by. Okay, we've got to carry all these digits. You can't round in finance until the very end. Can't emphasize that enough. Okay, so let's go write this down. All right, so we've got on the right, P is multiplied by this number 50.78138. Zero two six. Okay. On the left, we have 120,000. Okay. All right. So now, since P is being multiplied by this quantity to undo that, all you have to do is divide it off. Okay. So we're going to divide both sides by this decimal. Okay. So here we go. And then on the right side, okay. You have this decimal on the top and in the bottom, they cancel. That will leave you with P, which is gonna be the amount of each deposit. Okay, let's go to our calculator. Okay, so let's do 120,000 divided by, you're gonna to have to either re-enter that decimal exactly like you see it, all the digits, or you can call up the second minus sign or second answer function. Okay, and then that will give you your answer, this is how much Tim and Jesse need to deposit every six months to meet their, their goals. Okay, so let's jot this down. We're going to have to round. This is going to be dollars and cents. Okay, so two, let's see, let's write this down, $2,363 and then some change. All right. Okay, so let's go ahead and round it. Okay, um, we have seven cents. There's a zero that comes after, so we need to keep it the same. So Tim and Jesse, in order to save up the $120,000 for their kids' education, they need to deposit $2,363.07 every six months into their savings account, okay? And then their money will grow, not only through these regular deposits, but also through the accumulated interest, and then they will have $120,000 after the 15 years to send their kids to college, okay? All right, so now... At this point, okay, we uh, talked about um, in sections 3.2 and 3.3, we've talked about compound interest versus future value of an annuity formula, okay, how you tell the difference between the two formulas, how you work with each formula, okay. There is one last example in this section. I call it a capstone problem, okay. Um, it involves both formulas, okay. So um, this is a really good example to kind of gauge whether or not you are understanding compound interest versus future value of an annuity and how also how to use both formulas. Okay, so let's take a look at it. 